<laughs> she wants to say hi to Arnold. Hi, Arnold. Hello. <laughs> um, I know it's been a while, and we said that we were going to start making more videos as sort of our conversation. Um, and we really miss making the videos. We just miss you all together. But um, this is our first sort of check-in with you. Um, so, what should we start with? Um, how much we love him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, that's true, because when we left, every, everything kind of reminded us that. Like, everything, we're like, oh man, I wish Arnold could have seen that, or what would Arnold yeah. say about that, or... We even listened to your CD on the way, <laughs> on the way home. Yeah, if anybody doesn't have Arnold's CD, they should get it. Yeah, and the coloring book's pretty awesome, too. <laughs> yeah, is that, yeah, yeah. I don't, Mike drew that, it's yeah. really good. Yeah, it's really wonderful. So we're in Virginia, we're in Shenandoah Valley, and we were here for like two days before we got put to work, which was great, we loved it, and we, uh, there was, um, there was a training that was going on, it was like a retreat training, spiritual purification, at the center where we were staying at, and, uh, they asked us if we wanted to do the food, because I guess they had a budget to just do regular food, so since I was going to obviously do it for no charge, we were going to make the food for a raw food week, um, all raw vegan food, um, and just use that, try to make that budget work, which was sort of a challenge. It was definitely a loaves and fishes situation, and um, we made it work, though. And it was like, because there was a lot of people there that this center, they don't return people away because of the financial reasons. So if somebody can't pay, then and they need, still need the, the work, then they just they, they let them come, and they feed them and, and give them a place to stay. So that's right up our alley. It's and only one person, actually. Yeah! <laughs> there was 12 people. There was, that one person said. <laughs> there, were, there was 12 people who, who, who did actually, who were eating, who participated, and one person paid full price. And uh, so basically their money paid for everybody else. And they were cool with it, you know? It's like, it's part of the, it's really part of the work, you know? So it's like, it's letting go of all those things. But uh, it was really, it was really cool. And it let us see what, it goes on here, and it's a really, it's a really open and universal sort of modality of healing. Just really, just using the breath and connecting to the body, connecting to the elements. Um, and there's some nuance to it, and there's some practical stuff. But for the most part, if you can internalize that much, then you have it down. If you can be open to that, so something we can really align to. I was so uh, sort of moved and um, like motivated by Chris's fast that I started a fast when we got here. And um, I wasn't even planning on doing anything. I was just going to kind of lay around for the first whatever and do maybe six or seven days of fast or whatever I wanted to do. And so I started it and then we realized we were going to be making food for 12 people every day. And I thought, like, well, I, I already had like a day into it. And I was like, let me just see what my body can do. And if I need to break it, I will. But um, I was going really strong and I fasted for about three and a half, almost four days because the, I started the day before. So... Um, but uh, it, it brought on like a, a healing crisis that I haven't had in like six, seven years, which is awesome. I mean, it's really great to have that kind of enough energy that my body can start dealing with things. So it gave me a cold for the first time in like six years. And um, some really deep cleaning stuff was coming out of there. But then I broke the fast early. I only did it four days. And, and, um, and then I, the, the, the healing crisis stayed. So I was kind of making, doing all the food stuff and a little under the weather. Well, my body was clearing out, but, you know, grateful for it, because, you know, like Arnold would say, he'd say, you, you got a cold? Good. Good. <laughs> um, I fasted for one day, <laughs> but I decided that I had to break it because I had to take care of you. Why you <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but the... The, that's the, like the around when you're here in this community, it's not really, like, it's kind of, we call it a community, but it's not really that many people. It's just kind of, we're we're kind of one of the only people that stay here all the time, but there's always, there's an observation of fasting, and like, even if it's just like fruit fasting, or juice fasting, or smoothie fasting, it's like, you should observe it once or twice a week. I really and, like that. Yeah, and there's days of silence that you can observe, you, and it's all optional, I mean, nobody really tells you to do it, it's a suggestion, it's like, suggesting how you can sort of hit the reset button and clear yourself out every once in a while and just pay attention to these things and it's something that we've been living anyway it's nice to be with people who number one are, are conscious of those things and number two aren't pushing them on anybody you know I don't want to go 
somewhere where people are pushing even my beliefs around. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with that because eventually, if they change their minds, they're still going to be pushing something, and I'm not going to be aligned to it. But, but it's really great, and um, we've connected with their purpose, and they understand our purpose, and it's come together. And basically, we've been given sort of the go ahead to start our projects here. And, we're going to start doing the sustainability projects, the buckwheat projects, the greenhousing projects. We're going to start um, creating a way to feed everybody raw food at this center. I mean, we basically came in and took over. I mean, we made it a raw food retreat center, basically. It was, um, I mean, his philosophy, Leonard Orr, is the, he, he founded this, and the, the philosophy of the rebirthing breath work is that since you're connecting with your body and, 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 and nutrition is a big part of that and, and bringing in the earth element, that he's basically like his minimum is vegetarian and then uh, preferably vegan and then ideally raw. So because he's very open and he doesn't, he doesn't you know, make people pay a lot of money, it's hard to get somebody to come in and do raw food because raw food caterers charge like insane amounts of money. It's crazy. If you really want to get this out to everybody, you got to be willing to do the service, you know, like do the service in the, in the, in the spirit of, of, of the absolute and just mm -hmm. kind of like not really try to get so much material gain out of it. So that connects a lot with us and now we can give him that. I mean, we can take the minimum budget because we're used to the minimum budget mm -hmm. anyway. I mean, um, we were able to make it less than $2 a meal. Yeah, yeah, it was dollar eighty five per meal for, each for for the whole weekend on perfectly raw vegan gourmet stuff, and we were doing most of, and a lot of it. We were doing a large percentage, um, majority of it was low fat raw vegan, high fruit stuff, and that was good because there was a couple days in the training that were fasting days. So I led him in, I eased him into the fast, explained that, I explained the refeeding, even though it was only a one day thing. I wanted him to understand the concept of it, and I was able to give the seminars. Excuse me, they put me. They put me right into the seminar schedule to give seminars about raw food and, and, and um, natural healing and, and those things. And now I'm going to be teaching at the center. Um, and now we're going to be able to do raw food retreats here and raw food spirit purification retreats and um, trainings to train the, the, the uh, breath workers how to do raw food and how to teach their clients about that kind of nutrition. So it's instantly happened. I mean, we've come in and now we have this center with all these new options and it's right in our alignment with what we're doing so um sky's the limit really and now we're really just trying to get into these projects because um as you can see now we're in a room we don't like to be in rooms we like to be out to living outside but there's just and, and by the end of this week we will be because i have a couple of projects lined up i'm going to get the rocket thermal mass heaters going in the couple of shel the small shelters there, I can fix them up. There's enough scrap I can build out of that. Put the heater in the ground, make the ground the actual thermal mass, and just have a heated floor. And then there's a secondary fire pit if we need it. But um, so we'll be out of there. But we want to start. We want to get because we're going to start making food for these people. We have to make it. We have to keep the integrity. So we have to start um, figuring out our, our energy options. There's tons of sun. We're in the Shenandoah Valley, so we have solar options for sure that we can start making this food in, the, in, in sustainable kitchens that we can build ourselves. We're going to have greenhouses here, we're going to have greenhouses at the actual center, and we're going to have gardens at both places. We're going to be able to, if we can get the resources now to start building these things, we can be fully self-sustaining retreat centers, not just houses. So then we can start growing enough food to feed anybody and start opening it up to anybody who can't afford it but needs to come and have that sort of a healing process. So that's really what we're doing, and we have full support here to do that. And we really need to um, start making it more structured. And I'm, I'm working on a couple of things writing-wise, um, the first volume of my new book, and I'm trying to put together some other things that we can get out there as literature. And I'm going to start doing, when I do, I'm going to be doing all these trainings, so I'll start videoing, taping them, and putting more information on the site. But I want to make the site more membership friendly so people can contribute to it, whether it's through just spreading the word around or monetarily or contributing to the Karma Yoga Fund, just something to keep the energy moving in the project so that we can get these things going. I mean, it's just, to me, it's unbelievable that we now have the opportunity to offer these services to anybody, and it's going to be, uh, going to keep expanding as we do these things. I have a class already on Friday that I'm doing here, and on the 9th we have another training for another session of raw food so um that's gonna be it's gonna be interesting but we need you guys to support it 
and in whatever way you can. I mean, obviously a lot of people watch this channel because they want to be of service. They don't want to worry about the material things, so they're not financially robust. But some people are, and they can give that, but the people that aren't can still give the Karma Yoga donations and can still sort of just spread the word. Or um, They can even come here. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, right? Yeah. Uh, so there's all these different things going on. Um, Arnold, we love you, and we're going to, um, and we're going to see you soon, and, and you can refer people to, to this place now if they ever need somewhere to go, and they, they need us, and, um, we'll talk to you soon, buddy, and send us a video now, because this is, uh, now we have to start doing this, so we're sending you this, you have to send us one, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye, Arnold. Bye, everyone. <laughs>